Hello, lovely tarot people, and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah, and I like to talk about tarot stuff. And the tarot stuff I want to talk about today is actually inspired in part by a viewer request. So in a previous video, I was comparing different pip styles, that is the arrangement and stylization of cards 1 through 10 in each of the four minor suits in a tarot deck. And Robin over at Toadstool Tarot remarked that he was surprised I hadn't included any decks that mashed together traditional playing cards with tarot cards, uh, because he and I have a uh, affinity for this kind of conglomeration. And uh, the reason I hadn't done that was because I think these are a little bit in their own ballpark. So it would have been a little bit outside of what I was talking about in that video to include the playing card side of things. Um, but because I have several decks that do this, I thought that was actually a great suggestion for its own video. So here we are today. So we're going to be taking a look at a six deck simultaneous flip through. Um, I'm just going to be doing the pips, the one through tens, as well as the court cards on each of these decks because I want to look at similarities, differences, um, you know, how styles differ and converge. Um, I'm not claiming that any of these particular decks influenced each other, um, but it's interesting to see how artists pull from the vast smorgasbord of tarot and playing card history to come up with some unique designs. So that's what we're going to do today. And let me walk you through these decks so we know what we're looking at. So starting here on the top row, the upper left, we have The Playing Marseille by Ryan Edward. This is a full tarot deck in the Marseille style, but it has playing card pips. So hence that mashup name. Um, this is produced by US Games and it is in print and available. Next we have Rare Triumphs. This is also a playing card and tarot mashup. This is by Ian Cumsty and I will link um, his website below. He's an independent producer. Um, this is also the same deck that has the Pike and Clover uh, playing cards. So the, the Pike and Clover playing cards plus tarot stuff, if you're familiar with his work. And I did do a full walkthrough of this deck comparing it with a playing card deck called the Commoners playing cards that Ian Cumsty released a while ago. Um, and that video is on my channel. I'll try to remember to link that one as well. And then to compare, these are, I think are a little bit more playing card leaning, these two decks. And so to compare them in this row, I have just a set of playing cards. This is a uh, sort of photo negative set of playing cards that my mother got me. Um, it's by Bicycle, it's called Stargazer New Moon. And I don't know if this is still in print, I didn't look, um, but I assume bicycle playing cards are pretty easy to come by. On the bottom row, we have more Marseille leaning uh, hybrid decks. So on the left here we have the Maya Mineo or the Mineo Maya Tarot and this is by a Japanese artist named Maya Mineo. Um, I've mentioned this in my Japanese video but I didn't really get to feature it very heavily in a video yet so I'm, I'm excited to compare it to these others. And then we have the Angel Tarot which I have highlighted on the channel before. This is by the Angel Playing Card Company. Stuart Kaplan was involved in the original production of this in the 80s, and this is out of print. Um, actually, I think both of these are, but the Mineo Maya you can find on online. Actually, both of these you can find on online auction sites. So they're around. Um, I suggest not getting too wound up about pricing. I'm just trying to be patient and wait for a good deal. You know, you should be able to get uh, each of these for under $50 US, I would imagine. And then we're going to compare those uh, to this Tarot Francois Gassman of 1840. This is a Yves Renault production. Um, he's a card maker out of France, and I'll link his website as well. And this is a Swiss style Marseille, but it's a, a traditional Marseille tarot deck. And uh, I want to look at it uh, in contrast to these other hybrid decks and just see where we see some commonalities and some differences. All right, as I mentioned, uh, for the sake of time and clarity in this video, I'm not gonna be looking at the Major Arcana, um, but I did wanna show one card, and that would be the Fool, or in some of these packs, you'll see it called the Joker. Um, now, my understanding is historically that tarot cards followed on from playing cards, 
and that playing cards originally did not have a joker, um, but that may have been a retroactive adaptation either in its own right or possibly as a tarot influence of the Fool card. So I'm not clear on how the Fool card itself got into playing cards or even if it did or if the Joker is like a unique creation. Um, but because this is discussed, I thought I would show these. So here you can see most of these are called the Fool. This card here in the Playing Marseille. Um, this Burdell influenced uh, card in the Angel Tarot. We have our La Mat in the um, Yves Renault deck, the Gas Man. Um, and then we have two that are called the Joker. So the, in this deck, the Mineo Maya, and she does look like a Harlow Quinn type figure. And we actually have two versions, one with red accents. So we have two Jokers in this pack. We of course have a Joker in our traditional playing card deck. And then here, um, Ian Comstey has renamed a number of the majors, and this is one of them. So he calls this the Wanderer. There's also an unlabeled card that could be the Fool. Um, it's a uh, person sitting on the ground playing a lute in front of a crumbling wall. So, but because this person is walking and they have a staff, um, I pulled this one as our example since so many of these do have staves. So let's talk about deck order. Um, I think a lot of us that first learned to read tarot with an RWS system, a Rider Waite Smith deck, and you know, either Waite's writing on tarot or some derivative thereof, which most guidebooks these days are. Um, we learned the suit associations with elemental associations, right? Fire, water, earth, and air would be wands, cups, swords, and pentacles or coins or discs, respectively. Um, in playing card reading, though, in cardamancy systems, you get different kinds of associations. Camille Elias, for example, associates spades not with air, but with earth, as you use a spade to dig up the earth, etc. And so she associates spades or swords with the earth element, and she switches some other things around. So you get different kinds of associations depending on what approach to the cardamancy side of things that you're looking at. Um, and you also get this difference, and I'll go into this more when I get to my numerology series, but you also get this difference in whether the 1 through 10 have numerological associations or whether they have a magnitudinal association. So as you go through the suits and as you go through the numbers, are you getting more intense with one concept or are you blending concepts into different elemental associations? Let me say that in another way so maybe it's a little bit more clear. In other words, Take the suit of swords or spades, right? In a cardamancy sense, this is often the worst suit. It's the bad suit, the most negative. And you can see that carry over in a lot of tarot decks where the swords suits are depicted with a lot more violence and a lot more intensity than other suits are. And so that is one approach. You know, the suit itself has a certain quality. And then as you go through the eight, from the ace through the 10, the qualities intensify. Another approach, um, and one I typically use more, at least in tarot readings, is that instead of the entire suit having a certain quality, the suit is represented through the elemental association, which is pretty neutral. And then the numbers are the things that have the quality. So, you know, twos would be about push and pull or duality. Threes would be about growth. Um, fives might be about disruption, which, you know, makes sense in terms of the imagery that's often used. And then you get that kind of chaos factor that can be quite uncomfortable in a five. So that's something to think about. So the way that I have these arranged would be cardamantically. I've gone from the worst suit, the swords or the spades, up through to the best suits, which is the hearts. So we're going to look at swords and then clubs or batons diamonds or coins and then hearts or cups and i will say that all of these playing card decks do translate the suits that way um, so that seems to be one consistency 
And what I'm noticing here is that all of the cards that are more heavily playing card influenced have a very playing card arrangement of the pips. For example, here in the six, it's two rows of three. And then down here, it's anybody's guess. This Japanese deck certainly has its own kind of arrangements that I don't see in a Marseille style, and I don't see mimicking up here. It's kind of does, doing its own thing. And then this angel tarot is also kind of free for all. Um, there are, you know, ornaments and flowers and leaves and things like you might expect to see in a traditional deck like this, but the arrangement's completely uh, different. And it's one of the reasons that I collect the decks that I do, because I like that variety. I like seeing something different. And I don't want to get too precious or locked in or somehow, you know, rigid about the way that I interpret things. And if I'm going to interpret based on the arrangement of something, like, you know, okay, these three people are over here and these three people are over here and then you're you're the mediator in this situation. That's just one example of maybe how you might read that card. Um, you know, but the next time that comes up, if I have it in this configuration, it's, it's different. You know, it's different than that. So um, that's why I like to kind of change up my decks. I think that the arrangements can matter if you, if you want to read into them that way. And I think they can be useful um, outside of a uh, just a straight, you know, memorized kind of association or your numerology plus um, elemental equals this kind of thing. Um, those are all good bases for a reading, a good starting point, but I like to look at directionality. I like to look at visual rhymes, you know, is, is, uh, is there a round thing over here? Is there a round thing on that card? Why are these two round objects, you know, paralleling each other? Is there some other connection between these cards? Um, you know, or is there a pointy triangle pointing to the left? Okay, well, what is that pointing triangle pointing to? You know, what's over here in the reading? So I use a, a mix and match approach uh, when I do readings. So here's our first set of court cards. And here we have uh, pages, traditionally pages or valets, they would be called, uh, as in this card here. And then, of course, in playing cards, they're typically called jacks. So we have a jack here and here, and then we have a page here. And I do love the Maneomaya. It's, it's so elegant, and it's so different um, from anything else. So we have the jack, and then we have the knight or the cavalier. And of course, there is no knight or cavalier card in a typical playing card deck. So um, there's only three court cards in the playing card deck, but then all the rest of these have four. I was also curious to compare these three decks, so the playing Marseille, the playing card deck, and then this gas man, because you do get these kind of ornaments and things here that mimic um, some of the very geometric and stylized designs that playing cards have evolved into over time. So keep your eye on these three as well as we move through, especially the court cards. I've got my flipping down now. It's hard to like talk and flip things, six things and make sure you're still on the same card all the time. All right, so as promised, we're now going to go into the wands suit. So if you were doing degrees of unpleasantness, it would be slightly less unpleasant or slightly less unfavorable um, in the clubs or batons position. Here we have a very um, traditionally Italian looking uh, club, this kind of sawed off tree, and you get that here and here as well. Um, in this uh, playing Marseille, this is the Burdell influenced angel tarot, and then the gas man. And then here we get something totally different, beautiful dragon, and then a very traditional club looking here. Although I like this uh, from uh, Ian Cumstie's deck, that it is still a, a hand handing you the ace, the, the big object there.
And you'll see that the Marseille pattern very much differs from a traditional playing card pattern uh, in this particular suit. And I'm also noticing the differences in how each uh, artist associated the sort of Marseille suits or the Italian suits plus the French suits, right? So you have, this is the French suits, these are the Italian suits. So then this plus this equals this, batons with some clubs here, or it equals this, five uh, cl clubs or clovers in this arrangement, uh, but with Marseille flourishes, or it equates to this, which really doesn't have that sign of the uh, baton anywhere, or it equates to this, which is five Italian kind of batons, and you'll see this in like the Turoco Neoclassico, this sort of very bland arrangement, um, but they have clubs on as well. So interesting to see how each artist chose to blend those two together or not. And you'll notice that Ryan Edward did not put any numbers on his cards. You just have to look at the pattern. That's how you would quickly be able to identify that card. And we have our club's court cards. So here's our valet or our page or our jack. I love this outfit. I would love to have this outfit in all beautiful autumnal colors. Looks very comfy to wear. Here's our knight or a cavalier. And as we typically see, these guys are on horseback. And then in some other tarot decks, you will get actually a different um, animal associated with the cavalier. So sometimes they are a centaur or some other kind of man-beast hybrid. Sometimes they're riding on something else like a dragon um or a tiger or something like that so you get all different kinds of animal associations but it's usually horse here are our queens it's interesting to me who's looking to the left and who's looking to the right and what are these different traditions about uh, placement and directional and this is another instance where you can kind of see some of these ornaments on the sleeves especially this kind of zigzag pattern and these floral patterns uh, emulated here in the modern playing cards, and even here on her, the texture of her sleeves, for example. Again, I'm not drawing a direct correlation. I don't know exactly who influenced what or what overlapped with which in which time period, but it is just interesting to see this kind of confluence or divergence of design ideas. Kings, here we have some older kings with gray hair, some younger looking kings. He certainly looks very old. Old and wise, we hope. All right, on to our pentacles or coins or diamonds.
interesting that you get these very elaborate aces on the Maya, and you have the suit association here. And this would be the the medium good suit, right? Coins are coins are better than uh, getting stabbed or bludgeoned to death, or having a lot of work ahead of you. If you think about, I often think about the wand suit being associated with wood, and therefore building materials. You know, working on projects, labor. So money is maybe high, more highly valued in our capitalist society. Than labor is. Quite standard all the way around except for this one. And these are all in a similar pattern with the four corners and then a central figure. And a lot of variation here. I know that Rachel Pollock had written in one of her books, I think it was in Tarot Wisdom, that in one of her tarot classes they were looking at the Three of Swords card in particular, and she had the students draw three swords. You know, not, not based on any particular card or presentation, just draw three swords. And people came up with all kinds of arrangements. And so I like to think about that, you know, if you change the arrangement, does it really change the meaning? I don't I don't know. Maybe it does. Or maybe the number is the most important factor and the arrangement is sort of secondary to that. I do like the amalgamation that Ian Comstey has made of his diamonds. It's it's like a coin. Right? It's got this segment, it's sort of flower shape, and it's gold, but it's in a diamond shape. So it's a combination of this and this. And I'm not su surprised to see a parallel here in these two because they're both based on historic. So this is a historic reproduction. And then the Angel Tarot is based, like I said, on the Claude Burdell. So it has the same leaves in the background. The page is holding one coin and there's one on the ground. Um, but these have more creative license. Uh, I like our dog here looking up at the diamond. That's very cool. And then our Jack of Diamonds here has a purse. Uh, that's his diamond. Is I like to think of that as a, a purse. Um, and here we have the Page of Pentacles. Looks like supplicating, perhaps, uh, in order to receive their pentacle. mentioned different beasts. This Maya certainly has that. This is a different sort of creature here. And we have our queen, and I love how this queen and this queen are holding a flower, like you see in a modern playing card deck. No, no flowers here. Oops. No flowers down here. And again, our kings, and even though these are shown to pointing to the left and these are three quarters and to the right, you still get that cross-legged posture with the right leg crossed over the left. I also love these guys. Uh, you have this kind of playing card thing here, um, which you see sometimes on full-bodied playing card decks. 
you can see that little diamond shape in the hose with the leggings. And the most positive suit, right, what's better than money, is love. So here we have cups and hearts. And again, our association here, we have heart embedded in the design with a big cup. Um, here we have ace of cups, and it's a cup with a heart on the top of it. We have a heart embedded on a very traditional Marseille-looking ace here. And then this is Ian Comstey's design which is sort of a brick um, heart. This is another one where you get, you know, the assignment is draw seven cups or hearts and the outcome is all very different. Again, we can see this influence from the playing card, modern playing card deck. The jack has an axe, and these two uh, pages or jacks also do.
right, so we will end on the highest ranking feel good card in the deck, our King of Hearts. Thank you again for watching this video and being here for this exploration with me. I'm curious what you noticed, what you, uh, what leapt out at you, maybe that I didn't point out or didn't notice myself. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, which of these do you like best? Which uh, do you think makes for the best uh, type of reading deck? Um, let me know in the comments and thank you again and I will see you all very soon. Bye bye.